Hey, what's up everybody? It's Joel here and thanks for joining me today. Today I've got a special video for you today. I am going to do another clutch cutting replay video with an update. I know you guys love those. This is one of the most popular clutch cuttings that we've had. And if you're new to the channel, first of all, welcome. But you might not have seen this and I think you'll enjoy it. Um, and so as I was thinking through what to do for this week's video, I wanted to replay this cutting for you and then kind of give you an update on the state of affairs as it goes for our Dream Sickle project. If you've not been watching the channel for long, you may not be aware of this, but I was inspired uh, 15 years ago in 2009 when I saw Ralph Davis post the first public video of a dream sickle and uh, back then they were I think running somewhere around 30 grand so it definitely was not in my wheelhouse um, but I knew that someday I wanted to have a dream sickle and more importantly I wanted to make my very own um, I wanted my first one to be my own and I'm gonna be honest with you I've almost given up on that dream a couple of times and bought one but uh, I continued the struggle so this video is actually from last year in October and it was to that point 14 years that I had been waiting and I had one clutch that last year that gave me an opportunity to get a dream sickle and I won't spoil it for you here I'll let you watch the cutting but then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna give you an update on where things stand with the project currently welcome back to seventh level reptiles man have we got an exciting clutch tonight it's a little bittersweet, uh, sad on one hand, because this is the last clutch for us for the 2023 season. So that's always kind of a letdown in some ways. It's just a sad time. Um, yet we've got a rack full of babies that we're excited about. And this clutch in particular holds some excitement for me uh, that none of the other clutches this year so far have had. The reason why is because this clutch could bring the fulfillment of a 14 year dream. For 14 years I've been trying to, uh, well I've been dreaming about producing a particular uh, morph I guess, and um, last year I struck out. So this year is my, this clutch is the last clutch and it's my only shot. So I'm sitting here so hopeful that after 14 years of wanting one of these animals, I'll finally be able to get it. I always wanted to produce my first one myself. So this is like this big dream that hopefully is about to come true. I wasn't expecting this quite yet, but I was checking on them earlier and they've already started pipping. I can see at least one head out. I'm not sure about the rest, but uh, I'm really excited. So I'm gonna grab the eggs and let's take a look at what's inside. Thanks for joining me. All right, so here we are, moment of truth. I thought I'd hide it. Um, looks like just the one has pipped for now. Oh, we got two have pipped. Um, <clears throat> you see a dark little nose there, so that's probably not going to be what we're looking for in this clutch, but that's okay. Um, what I really, really want is healthy, happy babies. Um, that's what's most important. But I'm not going to lie, if I don't get what I've been shooting for out of this clutch, I will be kind of disappointed. The odds really aren't in our favor. I've got, I think it's 12.5% chance. So statistically, out of eight eggs, I should get one. Um, but last year, I had an eight egg clutch with 25% chance, and I didn't get any. Um, so I'm not going to say what the pairing is. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to be able to make this reveal and let it know, be known. Um, but... We'll just see how it goes. And some of y'all who've been following us for a while, you you probably already know exactly what I'm um, what I'm shooting for here. This doesn't look like it's going to be in this egg either, from what I can see. But number one has pip, so let's take a look inside and see what's waiting for us. <sighs> Come on, babies! I'm gonna take a sneak peek. Okay, okay, hold on. This is. Better than what I thought I originally saw through that slit. And it's not what we were shooting for. But. Still looks great. We have a pied here. Um, 
very little pattern that I can see. I think it's a yellow belly pied, but we'll be able to tell better once it comes out. It's heads right there, but not wanting to show it to me. And again, I don't want to spill uh, any more of this yolk than, than we can help. So we'll gently put that little one over there and we'll move on. But obviously visual pied, I think yellow belly, but uh, we'll see better when it comes out. So there's surprise number one, if you don't know what, what we're searching for here. Uh, pied is involved, but obviously that's not all we're looking for out of this clutch. But great to see a pied on the first cut. And no pied here. Again, we missed a second time. <laughs> this baby's reacting strongly though, like, what are you doing? So I'm really excited. This is probably a healthy baby. And look at that little cutie. Uh, looks like it's looks like it might just be a normal. Um, you want to give me a little bit of a head view there? Maybe a yellow belly. Very cute. Hey, little buddy. Thanks for sticking your head out to say hi. All right, we got number three here. I wanted to cheat with each of these eggs and look inside, and here we've got another uh, non-visual, but very active, moving around. Reacting to touch, sticking its head out. Oh, look at that. Hey, little guy or, or girl. This one's definitely a yellow belly. Um, I can see the flaming coming up the side. Sorry. Um, cute. Oh, definitely a yellow belly. Now he's got his whole head out. Like he's saying hey to his sibling over there. All right, number four. Come on. Please, Lord. Oh, man. Odds are not... Not with us on this one. That first one was a pied, which was nice, but it looks like another maybe yellow belly or a normal. Very light. But not giving those obvious yellow belly vibes like the like the last one. But very light for a wild type so all right now let's see number five which i think is just like those not a visual recessive of any type based on what i could see of the head earlier but let's take a look nope it is a recessive we've got a yellow belly pied here and no doubt about it. We got plenty of pattern on that and that is absolutely most definitely a yellow belly pied. This pairing produced some amazing yellow belly pieds last year. So it'll be really exciting to see this guy out of the egg and uh, strutting his stuff because it's probably going to be gorgeous. What am I saying? He already is. He or she. All right, man. We're down to three eggs, and I'm getting a little nervous here that we're not going to hit again. Definitely didn't hit it on this one. <sighs> but we these these seem to be some sociable a sociable bunch. We got another yellow belly uh, sticking its head out there. So 
everybody seems to be really healthy and responsive, so that's good. <sighs> Two more shots. Ugh. <laughs> oh, looks like another wild type or yellow belly. Non-visual. All right, come on. Moving around there. Let's see if I can get it over without too much mess. All right. Well, it all comes down to this. Lucky number eight. I need to take a breath here. Uh, I knew it was a long shot, but you gotta you gotta take those shots sometimes. <gasps> oh, man, I got excited for a second, and yeah, then not so much. It is. It is a pied, but once again, we have not gotten what we're looking for here. This is, I believe, another yellow belly pied, although I cannot see very much um, pattern. I can see a little bit of the head. I'm thinking another yellow belly pied, so always happy for those, um, but obviously... The disappointment of missing yet again on something that when I first saw a dream sickle in 2009 on a Ralph Davis video, I was instantly captivated. They were about 30 grand back then, so that wasn't something I couldn't afford a pie back then, much less a dream sickle. Um, so I always set out that one day I wanted to uh, produce my own. And uh, this pairing was a uh, yellow belly pied het lavender to a yellow belly double het. So we didn't hit any any supers, no yellow, uh, no ivories. Um, really not the greatest odds. We did okay on the pied, but we did not get a single visual lavender albino um, from any of those, which is obviously disappointing uh head to head is 25 percent chance of getting lavender visually and we didn't we didn't get any so um all of these babies have a 66 percent probability of being het for lavender albino um, all of these babies are het pied these obviously are pied visually so um not the results we were hoping for but on the good side all of these babies had a very good response it's I was dealing with them. They seem healthy, and I'm sure they're going to be gorgeous once they come out. So we'll check back on them once they crawl out or shed out, and uh, we'll do an update. Thank you so much. All right, well, wasn't that cool? Thanks for watching with me. I always love seeing those babies for the first time. But, of course, you can see there was a little bit of disappointment that that clutch did not bring us the coveted dream sickle that I've been waiting for for 14 years now 15 years. Um, I had two clutches in 2022 and we missed. I had one clutch last year and we missed. I know it was long odds, but now you're probably wondering, what about year 15? Was this the lucky year where I finally produced a dream sickle? And if you've watched any of our egg video, egg cutting videos this year, you probably already know the answer to that is no. Both my females decided they did not want to lay eggs this year and so we had no dream sickle clutches possible unfortunately that's the way it goes with ball pythons but i do want to give you an update of what's coming it's almost time to start pairing for the 2025 season and i'm going to give you a look real quick at the breeder females that i have both the ones that i've already bred as well as some that are up and coming and we'll just take a look at them and hope for the future so let me grab the first one i hope you enjoy all right, so this is our first girl. She is not quite ready yet. So if you see her and think, oh, she looks a tad bit small, she is. 
Um, she's just shy of 1,200 grams. So it is possible that if she starts pounding rats and really kicking up her weight, if she wants to breed, a lot of times they will do that. Um, it might be possible that in, uh, you know, towards the middle of the season, she may be ready to start pairing. But as of right now, I'm not actually planning to pair her this year. Um, I prefer for them to be a minimum of 1,500 grams um, when I start pairing. Um, so she's got a few to go. And they will oftentimes begin to put on weight during breeding season. I'm trying to get her closer. The lights in here are making her kind of shiny. She is a lavender albino, het pied. And uh, with lavender albinos, a lot of times when they're babies, you can't actually tell the, the uh, a distinct difference between them and a regular albino. The main difference is that the eyes on the albinos are pink, whereas lavender albinos are, whoop, are much more reddish. Um, not nearly as light, but she's getting to that point. You can see her color is still a little white, but it's starting to turn purple. And that usually happens as they approach a year. They'll start to get a lavender hue, and that will continue as they grow. As I'll show you in a little bit on, uh, on another female. Oh, she crawled through some stuff. But this is a lavender albino, het pied, and uh, either the middle, maybe early, uh, early Q2, of 2025 she may be ready to go and we'll start pairing her but we'll see we may wait till next winter let's take a look at the next girl all right who doesn't love a great pied so this is next girl is a simple pied het lavender albino <clears throat> this is one actually the last one and this one are both girls that we produced here at seventh level reptiles um, from some of those clutches that we missed on and she is Growing up nicely, she is 1,480 grams, so she is perfect. Um, once we pair her, probably at the beginning of December or maybe January, um, she should start pounding food, wanting to eat, and we'll, we'll ultrasound her for follicles as well and see if she's growing any, if she looks like she's going to go. But this will present at least one more opportunity for us to, uh, to produce some dream sickles, and since the male she'll be going to is pied, all of them will be pied babies for sure, so um, we just have to hope we can hit on that het to het pairing, which we've missed in the past, but she's a, a gorgeous little girl, very high pattern, low white, um, but she is gorgeous, and her patterns are so cool, even if she is a little bit flighty, but let's get her back, and we'll take a look at the veterans. All right, so here we have girl number three. Now, the clutch that you just saw me cut a few minutes ago was actually from this mom. She is a yellow belly, double hat, pied, lavender albino. Um, you can sh see she just has this beautiful V on her head. So when you saw that V stamp in a lot of the, um, the yellow belly babies on the cutting, this is where they got it from. Hers is perfect. Hi, mama. How are you? She doesn't usually like it when I'm irritating her and getting her out like this. But as you can see, like most ball pythons as adults, even when they're a little on edge, they are just puppy dog tame, gentle, they're easy to handle, and that's why they make such great pets, even for kiddos. Hey, mama. Well, we saved the best for last, or, or at least the biggest. Let's take a look at the big girl. All right, so here we are with the big mama. Um, this is actually my largest ball python. You've probably seen her in some other videos. Hey, darling, it's okay. Look, you want to hide under my hand? Does that make you feel better? So I like being in the lights. Now, you might notice that she is a bit larger than the rest, um, quite a bit larger, actually. So the last female I showed you, uh, who, of course, is a proven female breeder, she gave me, I think it was eight eggs last year. Um, well, a year ago, she didn't breed for me or didn't produce last year. Neither did this girl. Neither of them wanted to cooperate in 2024. Um, so I guess that's technically this year. But this girl is over 4,300 grams. So to put that in perspective, that's I think that's just over 9 pounds, almost 10 pounds, um, which is very large for a ball python. Um, but obviously, she's still very easily manageable for a single person, um, which... Let me assure you, the vast majority of ball pythons are never going to get this size. She has been a, a voracious eater since the day I brought her home as a 80-something gram hatchling. Um, got her in Daytona in 2019. Um, she's given me, I think, just one clutch so far. The last two years, she's been stubborn. 
Um, she's been on a diet lately, which I know you want your breeders to be nice and big and healthy, but you don't want them to be obese. And I want her to live a long, happy, healthy life. So she's kind of been on a diet lately because I don't want her putting on too much more weight. But she eats anytime I give her the chance. Uh, she's gorgeous. You can see in her a little bit better how these lavender tones in the white saddles uh, and dorsal striping have come into play, much more so than the younger one that I showed you earlier. And when that happens, she also gets this cool contrast in the colors. I think you can see that coming through the, the camera, but there's like tones of yellow throughout these, these saddles that um, just make for a very beautiful, very cool appearance. And uh, you are gorgeous and you're heavy. You're kind of heavy. <laughs> she gives me a little bit of workout. But I'm hoping that all three of these girls won't be stubborn and they'll actually decide to breed for me this year and give us a lot of good chances at some dream sickles because they're beautiful and awesome. And I really, really, really want to make one. Um, actually, more than one. But anyway, this is my big girl. Her name is Aphrodite. I don't remember if I said that earlier. Um, the the goddess of beauty not that i subscribe to goddesses but um i do did appreciate greek mythology when i was a kid so she's gorgeous anyway my arm's getting tired from holding her just on one hand but that's probably good for me um thanks for joining uh, i hope that as the months come i'll have uh, updates to share with you and we'll get to see some beautiful clutches laid by this girl and the others and then we'll get to enjoy watching them pip and uh, possibly even cutting them after that time together. Sorry, that was my hand that scared her, not my voice. But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, please leave your comments below. Like and share if you like these kind of videos. I, I really appreciate you guys. I thank you all for tuning in and uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. Please remember to share the love of reptiles with anybody you can, and I'll see you guys next time.